Well, hey folks, welcome back to the Trespasser Let's Play. Today we're doing level 7, The Ascent Part 2. All this level is is climbing the mountain and solving a couple of puzzles along the way. Not too complicated, but it still gets a little bit tricky, so here we go. So here we are, the level starts you right out at the beginning of this trail with a Tribe C Raptor up in your face and no weapons to speak of. There's a couple rocks lying around, but we know how those work out, so we're just going to run for it. Up there, stretching off into the draw distance, is Mount Watson. Up at the peak lies the end of the game. This level involves fighting our way up switchbacks that are lousy with velociraptors until we get about two-thirds of the way up the peak by the end of the level. Now for the moment, all we can do is run down to the bottom of the hill where those big old rocks are. There is a gun hanging out down there, but there are also two or three more raptors. Alright, scratch that. Because this guy's onto us, we're gonna bypass the pistol that's down there in the boulders and run up this hill instead. Up at the top, there's some more Mayan ruins, and there's a better selection of firearms up there. So, that's going to be our destination for the moment. Alright, there we go. I'd rather have a Kalashnikov than a Deagle any day. Now, the interesting thing about this area is that all these big stone things here are meant to fall over. It's a bunch of traps, kind of like the wall from the last level. Now, these are here so that you can use them to kill raptors and save some ammunition. Now, you can use them in this way, but sort of in the same way that you can use Anne's Noodle on here to perform a secret handshake. I suppose it's possible, but do you really want to go to all that trouble? Six rounds. Now, some of you may have noticed that we're using a heads-up display this time. This is an experimental feature added by the ATX2 mod put up by the uh, Trescom guys. You can see what they were trying to do, but to tell you the truth, I just don't care for it. I think Trespasser works a lot better without any of this. Now let me say right now, I have had no shortage of difficulties with this level. For some reason, this level just makes my machine crash like crazy, and it has been a real pain getting this update done. Now what this means for you folks is that I'm going to avoid looking at the sky or to the right because those seem to be the two things that cause this thing to crash most often. Even avoiding that, we are going to have some problems, but just bear with me, and I'm sure we can get through it without too much trouble. And here we've got another Trespasser famous jumping puzzle. It's as if the developers all of a sudden realized, hey, we haven't done one of these in a little while. So they stick one in here, and in a few other places, and actually this level has quite a few jumping puzzles. I figure the devs were just trying to make up for lost time. Now what begins to be an issue with this level is the extreme resiliency of the Tribe C Raptors. The combination of the no small number of these Raptors in the level and their extreme resiliency to bullets make this level a little bit trickier than some of the previous ones. You find yourself really having to conserve your ammunition or go for headshots because otherwise things get a little bit tricky. Now after defeating those two guys down there, we're going to continue up the hill where there are two more waiting for us up at the top. Luckily, we've got a nice Bell shotgun along the way. Now it's around this area we really begin to see a breakdown in the correlation between the game itself and the strategy guide that ended up getting published. You see, the strategy guide states there are supposed to be two Albertosaurs in this area and a tranquilizer pistol. It instructs you to go and get the pistol, trank one of them, kill it, and then run from the other one since you don't have enough firepower to take them both down. There's definitely no Albertosaurs in this area. In fact, there are none in this entire level. We saw the last one in the game in the last level. I'm not sure where this went wrong, but even the screenshots for this level aren't even close to what's actually here. Oh, sweet Joe, I love this shotgun. It is just a raptor-killing machine. I wish there were a few more of them throughout the game. They're darn useful. Here we have another touchy area within the game. If I look to the right down the canyon, the game locks up, so I have to be very careful to kill these raptors while they're on the left side of the screen. Three, two, one. 
Whoops. Well, I guess we gotta watch out for knocking holes in the textures when we throw our weapons away. Wouldn't want to fall into one of those. Now, I'm very carefully not looking to the left and down the canyon here because it's caused the game to crash every single time. I don't know what causes that, but I hope the rest of you have better luck than I did. Here we've got jumping puzzles, we've got balancing puzzles, we've got teeter-totter puzzles. This level really likes to punish the player for some reason. About 20. Now this forested area gets a little bit difficult. The route the developers wanted you to take goes straight to the right and causes you to get hung up on the ground more often than not. I don't recommend it. Instead, I'm going to go straight ahead and follow the mountain hill all the way up along the left side. That'll keep me from getting hung up on stuff, but it's going to make me walk a little bit longer, so please bear with me. 17. Alright, now that we've dispatched these two guys here, we can climb up to the top of this hill. Up at the very tippy top is another set of Mayan ruins, more stuff that can be pushed over and fall down on stuff. Once again, they're kind of a buggy area in the game, and I'm not going to look left or right as much as possible, uh, simply because that causes the, uh, the game to crash. Uh, again, not sure what causes that, but uh, all I know is that's what it does. So. We're going to be able to pick up a couple of Benelli shotguns up there, and uh, that's when we start our way up the switchbacks, heading up the mountain. Seven shots. Now, the entire walk up the mountain here is comprised of two things, and that's fighting and puzzles. Some of the fights are easier than others, but all of the puzzles are incredibly difficult, either thanks to the engine or thanks to things just sort of not working quite right. That's it. Well, I gotta say one nice thing about this mountain is that the developers didn't have to bother with very many textures, did they? Looks like 12. Now, I'd like to point out that while Ann says 12, the ammo counter down there in the bottom right says that we have 11 shots. The walk up the mountain here is long and tedious, and I'd be lying if I said it was very interesting. But, it does have interesting parts. You see, from a geologic standpoint, this mountain is actually pretty interesting. You see, uh, switchbacks don't form naturally. They're pretty inefficient. They're only something that a person would make in order to make it easier to get up the side of a mountain like this. And while it's safe to assume that that is the case, since we've got weapons and items lying all over the place, are we to assume that these workers traverse these traps and puzzles every day on their way to work? I'm not exactly sure why all this Five, junk is here, but three. I mean, a road is a road. It's not going to change that much over the last couple of years. That's it. As near as I can tell, this entire road going up the side of the mountain just shouldn't exist. It makes no sense.
Now to get through this area we have to do a box stacking puzzle, but as you can see there are no boxes around, around here. 10. The boxes are way up on a ledge, so we've got to pick up a gun here and shoot them down first. Eight. Seven. Now we'll just drag this thing on over here and put it into place, and then we can get on over. Looks like seven. Six. Five. As you can see, there's no shortage of weaponry in this area, and I must say I do appreciate that. It's just the puzzles get a little grating after a while. Now what this feels like sometimes is a rehash of the first level of the game. Here we've got all these physics puzzles and all these box puzzles, and they're treating it as if it's new. Yes, it's impressive. Yes, it's well done, but they seem to think that we haven't seen these before. And that's what makes me wonder if maybe this is one of the examples of the different teams being split up. Who knows if one team didn't know that all these puzzles had been put into the first level, and they decided, hey, why don't we put these into the last level for some reason? In any case, we were done with these puzzles back on level one. They really have no place being here, except for to slow us down, and, uh, and are altogether just not too good. Feels full. You know, an interesting thing about Trespasser is the dinosaurs cannot take falling damage, otherwise they'd be dropping dead all over the place for all the jumping that they do. I suppose it makes sense that way. I routinely fall to my death after jumping three feet down a ledge, but these raptors are always jumping over my head and landing without any problem. I suppose if they did take falling damage, that would kind of reduce the uh, difficulty of the game a fair bit. That said, there are some interesting things you can do in this level. Since this walkway is so narrow, the raptors routinely knock themselves over by pivoting where they are. Their tail hits the wall and shoves them over to the side, and they usually fall down. Now, they don't die when this happens, but they can't get back up, and they'll usually just slide all the way back down to the bottom of the mountain. You can also do this by shooting them in the face, and they back up a little bit and tend to fall off. It's a nice trick, and it'll save you some ammo, but like so many other things in this game, it's often not worth the trouble. As we continue along the road, we're beginning to see more and more signs of human habitation. Take this truck chassis, for instance. I'm not even going to try to figure out what this thing is doing up here, since I can barely get up this road. I don't see how a truck ever could. But, nevertheless, there it is. It's a good sign, because it means we're getting towards the buildings up ahead. The buildings signal the power station, the power station signals the satellite station, and that signals the end of the game. October 1996. The InGen Corporation is taken out of my hands by a vote of the Board of Directors. My nephew dispatches his team. I'd like to point out that this lovely heads-up display obscures the subtitles on Mr. Hammond's lines, which makes it a little bit difficult to figure out what he's saying, since he does tend to echo and various other things. I'm sure you've heard the rest of the story on the television news or in the tabloids. I'm still a little disappointed with this heads-up display. I think I'm gonna have to go ahead and give it a D plus. Here we have another physics puzzle, another one of these teeter-totter things like we had in the first level. Anybody who's played Half-Life 2 is gonna be real familiar with these, but luckily this one's not quite as tricky. In 1989, the park was nearly complete. Our investors demanded on-site approval and I Idiotically, as it now turned out, <laughs> believe we were ready. But you can see all the way to Costa Rica or Panama. 
Now here we've got two raptors up ahead and the last mounted machine gun in the game. I like that they set it up so that we could have a little bit of fun. Well, that rotten thing's as hard to aim as ever, but it does the trick. Seven shots. Huh. The debacle of August 27th. 1989 is now quite well known, and the legal consequences were, as you may well imagine, rather extensive. I imagine this was supposed to be a very impressive panorama scene when Bill Brown was originally composing the music here, but I guess he didn't know at the time that the draw distance for Trespasser was going to be all of 150 yards, which explains the white fog floating around out there. That's not a mistake. I've turned the draw distance all the way up as far as it will go and nothing ever appears out there. It's just white. Now here we have a revolving bridge physics puzzle. Now I've seen this before. I hope all you engineer goons are shaking your heads right about now because I can't even begin to imagine all of, all of the problems of building something like that as a load-bearing structure. Batman, up ahead, the bridge. Bridge got Quick, I've got oculars. Holy hobgoblins! That must be Joker and Penguin. Right, John. I'm swinging over the river. On October the 3rd, 1989, I sat on a wooden bench in the waiting room in Washington, D.C. A government panel put me on the stand. As my name was read out, the session room went silent. They walked up the aisle towards the stand. I was being called to account, but I had no clear explanation to give. I gave myself over to the strange, lonely discipline of the market. Investment strategies and profit. I stood apart. Master of codes and lost worlds of heat and cold. And the sleep of a hundred million years. Now there's an interesting piece of information you don't usually hear in reference to Jurassic Park. The InGen Corporation was taken away from Mr. Hammond by the United States government. Now, something's wrong here. This big trailer usually falls down. I'm not sure what's going on. About 15. 12. 10. Alright, never mind. We're almost at the end of the level here. My work. My work lies where I left it. If there was anyone brave enough and clever enough to take it and return the keys to time. Perhaps the foundation of a new empire. Alright, try to ignore Anne's arm spazzing out right there, but you can see that I have to be touching the switch to make the lift come down. There's another one just over there that makes the lift go back up, and it's the same deal. I have to be touching it to make the lift go up. This was actually probably one of Trespasser's more clever puzzles. Eight shots. Now, you see that piece of plywood there, strategically placed next to a fulcrum box, positioned just right to fall on top of the switch? And that, as they say, is that. It's been a pleasure, folks, but it's time to wrap up our little adventure to Site B. Tune in next time for the eighth and last level of Trespasser, The Summit. I'll see you at the top.